hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this video tutorial I want to demonstrate you how you can do a simulation for a three-dimensional laminar channel flow case so there are a couple of things that we are going to work on today and something that we haven't considered very much into the past so one of them being is the three-dimensional case so that being said that means we we have to come up with a 3d geometry we have to come up with a 3d mesh and we have to use the appropriate boundary conditions and once we get the three-dimensional geometry then we need the laminar flow so the the governing uh, parameter for that case would be the reynolds number here so we just want to make sure in that case that the reynolds number doesn't exceed a critical reynolds number or it, it, it's not a lot otherwise it, there could be some transition or because it's a 3d case so uh, it's easier to get those perturbations that could make your flow towards the turbulent regime so it's better if you're playing on the safer side for the Reynolds number so without wasting further time let's get started so I've already done the simulation here because for the 3d simulation uh, doing them on the video live that could take some time because the solving uh, because solving a 3d mesh that is time consuming as compared to a 2d cases so that's the reason why my earlier videos they were focused on 2d because 2d are really fast they don't have a lot of grid points to work on so the geometry it's it's not very different and it's just a 3d version of what we were doing in the 2d domain so in the 2d domain we were simply considering the yellow part so i just put my cursor on the yellow part and if if i want to do a 2d analysis i, ju I just take the yellow part and work on it but I, since i want to use a 3d body i want to extend this yellow part from a plane to a cuboid like this and we're calling this as a channel because uh this 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 rectangle over here this would be the serving as the cross section for this channel so that means the flow would enter from one of these rectangles so you can say that this but this face right here would be by inlet and the other face over that side the slightly yellow shaded rectangle that would be my outlet and the water would be flowing or the fluid would be flowing through inlet to the outlet and the other faces would be my walls so it's it's pretty easy geometry and if you don't know how to make it i have posted another video about how to use this new software that is space claim which is a new edition in the new student version of ansys so if you don't know how to make the geometry don't hesitate to check the other video so making the geometry is pretty easy and straightforward and once that part is done we'll head over to mesh and we do the same kind of thing that we do for a 2d case we define some parameters to make the mesh and there are some things that we want to make sure that the mesh is not very coarse or very fine and in this particular case we cannot make the mesh very fine because the student version of the ensis because this is a teaching material and it doesn't allow me to go beyond a certain number of the elements so i think in this case it's 500,000. so i'm well below that and as you can see i have a sufficiently fine mesh and it's not cartesian it by that i mean that it's not totally like rectangular orthogonal mesh so there are some triangular or because it's 3d so there would be some tetrahedral elements over here and for that i've just used a refinement and that gives me the desired result and as for the naming selection i have an inlet as i told you on one side and outlet on the other side and all of the remaining I'm calling them as the walls so that makes life easier so all of these walls so they are four walls two top and two side walls and I'm calling them as the stationary walls or simply I'm just naming them as walls here and once that part is done you can simply actually you should go into the setup but because i've already run the sim simulation i'll rather go into the solution page otherwise it would disrupt my entire simulation so it usually takes around like 10 minutes uh so it's not a long time but yeah it, it 
it also depends on your Reynolds number. So starting from the beginning, I am using a steady state solver because I want my simulation to be laminar and in laminar cases, you can get a steady state solution unlike the turbulent cases. And for the models, my viscous model is laminar. I'm defining water with a density of 1000 and a viscosity of 0.001. So these numbers, I'm just making it up because so that I can clearly define my Reynolds number. So with that being said, I cross check if my cell zone, which is the entire geometry is fluid. And for the boundary condition, my inlet is velocity driven. So ideally a, a channel is usually it's pressure driven that you have a higher pressure on one side and a lower pressure on the other side and the flow gets driven because of the pressure. But in here we're using a boundary condition based on velocity. So if I'm using a velocity of one, so that would mean that my Reynolds number would be somewhere around thousand if, if you do the calculation. And given that the the height of the channel it's one mm, so it's really very small. And the other thing is our rest. So uh, I'm just using the default conditions for the balls and for the outlet. And for the methods, I'm not touching anything at all because I know that uh, by default, Ansys uses a simple method. So simple method is the same technique that we used for the 2D simulations. And we're using the same method for the 3D. And then I, I initialized my simulation and then I ran it for 500 iterations. And I found out that uh, it wasn't really converged after 500, so I gave it another 500. And after a thousand iterations, even then it was not converged, but because my, my Reynolds number is somewhere near the transition range, so probably it could be because of that. So if I talk about the residuals, so my UV and W velocity residuals were of the order of 10 to the power minus six but the continuity residual, it was still 10 to the power minus three, which if it was 10 to the power minus four, the simulation in ideal case, it would say it's converged, but because it's not then, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a good results. It just means that you don't have a perfectly steady results in the case, in the sense of time. So once that is done, I'll just close it up and then we go to check the results. So there are a couple, in couple of interesting things in the case of uh, in the case of laminar channel flow. So I've already uh, put in some planes to calculate different kind of things. So let them load. So this is just the the pressure uh, throughout the channel, and it's a volume rendering. So this feature is found here. So it's interesting when you have like multi-phase flow, and uh, you can use this feature to to create the contours throughout the domain. So it's it's a volume based uh, uh, feature. So it would uh, give you throughout the volume. So if you if you just want to pinpoint one particular phase in a multi-phase simulation through in your whole domain, it would do the job very well. So just disregarding this. So we can first begin with the plane in the YZ plane because that's where where most interesting things happen. So as you can see that the pressure decreases linearly as it should because in the channel flow the pressure is a linear function of the downstream distance. And for the velocity, we know that there is a parabolic distribution, but as you see that uh, the velocity, it's if, if you just focus on the center line, then the velocity is not totally constant. It changes it, it like at first it's yellow, so it's uh, somewhere lower and then it gets higher and then it gets constant. And until the distance it gets constant, that distance is called as the developing uh, developing length or that entire region is called the boundary layer developing region. So in the case, in the real scenarios where you have to do the experiments, you want to make sure that uh, your pipe or your channel is big enough 
so that the flow is not entirely developing so we want to the flow to be also to be fully developed and if this phenomena if this phenomena can actually be seen better if I tilt my plane in the XC yeah so now you can see it better that in here we don't get a very good distribution of the velocity so because in the channel we get a maximum velocity in the center so ideally there should be a parabolic distribution but we don't get it so at the so this is the inlet part so from the inlet the flow enters and after some distance it uh, tries to go towards that it tries to attain that parabolic distribution and after some distance it tries and it finally attains one if the flow is uh, perfectly laminar without any perturbation or disturbance but in this case as the Reynolds number is close to 1000 I would expect that there would be some disturbances here and there because of the edges and yeah so so I, I hope that this this is a very simple case for a 3d simulation to begin with and uh, if you are new to doing 3d simulation I would really recommend you to go through with this simulation and then you can modify it and you can instead of using a rectangular cross-section you can go for a circular cross-section and see what the differences are and how the developing region changes and what kind of uh, profiles or the velocity cross-sectional profile are prevalent in those kind of geometries and that would be a really good exercise and once that is done then you can try to implement energy boundary conditions on these and see what the temperature boundary layer and the temperature developing length looks like because these are the things that uh, are very well established in the theory and you can compare them with your simulation so then you get the better idea of uh, if your simulation is going on a right path or not and once that is on the right path um, you you gonna feel definitely very happy about it and that's the fun part of learning so i hope that uh, i'll i'll help you in this path and if you get any doubts or if you have any suggestions feel free to drop me any emails and sometimes i can i can be a bit cranky about replying to emails so just uh, send me a reminder if you don't get a respond in in a couple of days i'm usually active but sometimes i just forget to reply uh, and if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can get direct updates. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.